Good evening. Welcome to Sunday Night Satsang with John and Michelle. Hi. Good Welcome. evening. Good Hello. evening. Thank you for giving up a bit of your Sunday to spend uh, the next hour with us. We really enjoy these sessions with you and we're grateful that, uh, that you join us and share our energy. Yeah. These times that we're going through are very, very challenging and it's to realize that while the circumstances of our lives, the situations, uh, people even are challenging, difficult, etc. Everything arises and can be changed by a field of energy. And sitting in a sacred place like the satsang on a Sunday night is part of that process of awakening. It's part of the process of healing for ourselves and also for the collective. So it's quite important work that we do on a, on a Sunday night, although it's not work, it's play. So thank you for joining us. We've had a beautiful day here in Cape Town today. It's been really uh, beautiful um, April it's day. Beautiful, really beautiful. Still day quiet, now. warm, um, absolutely no beautiful. No wind. Change. We're grateful for that. And uh, yeah, it's been a beautiful day. And hopefully it has been with you. So just let us know where you are watching from Hi, and uh, what your what your uh, weather has been like uh, today. Just yes. Welcome. We can see Deborah's here. We can't see anybody else for some reason. For some I don't reason, know why, but yeah. I know there are other people that have joined. Yeah. So we'll just start yeah. as we normally do. And send us the hearts. We love getting hearts. We do. And uh, the like button. And uh, if you find what we are saying of any value to you, won't you press the share button as well to let the information radiate that out. Would be wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And oh, there we got tonight some Tonight we are, thank you for the hearts. Thank We're you, going yeah. to be talking about magic. magic. There's magic in the air. And why is that? Because we've got a big alignment happening. Oh, I thought it was Valentine's Day or something. Mm, it's no. bigger than that. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, we're going to learn all about that. We have a very special week coming up, a very special alignment, and uh, this is sure to trigger stuff within us, but also to help us awaken and shift into a new level of consciousness so that's the subject we're going to be talking about tonight magic how about that magic mm -hmm. where's your wand um yeah i'll use this little wand oh okay <laughs> that's good. hi heidi hi can you hear us all right is the sound okay just let us know if you can hear us okay if you can see us all right hi vanessa hello vanessa beautiful, beautiful sunny in the UK. Oh, well, that's excellent. Nice. Spring must be on the way. It must be spring. Yeah, Hi, Paula. Paula. Hello, Paula. Hi, Paula. Can you hear us okay? Just let us know. Because, yeah, sometimes the mic isn't 100%. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the hearts. Okay. We really value those hearts. It's all about hearts. That's yeah. what this shift is all about. It is. Are you going to work your magic now? I'm going to do my magic. Into the We're going to do magic. State. Yep, that is magic. Magic. All right, so just settle back into your um, chair or bed or floor, whatever you're sitting or lying on, and just gently close your eyes. You, you don't have to close your eyes. You can keep your eyes open. But I find that it, um, it quickens the relaxation process when we close our eyes, because when we look at the room around us, we're still fixated with the world of form. But when we shut our eyes, we go more into the world of, of energy, of uh, of um, none form. So let's just gently close our eyes and uh, just let the concerns of today, the experiences of today, slide off you like you Teflon coated. And air, all the worries, all the concerns about life just slide off you. Just withdraw your mind from all other times and all other places and fully occupy the most sacred place in all of creation, which is the present moment, here and now. And talking of occupying, let's just occupy our bodies, because our body, believe it or not, is a sacred temple and this sacred temple 
is a portal into direct connection with the divine, with life, with presence. For while the mind is able to travel in time and leave the present moment and journey into past and journey into future, the present moment is always anchored in the present moment, in alignment with life. And the divine is omnipresent. And so when we bring our awareness, our conscious awareness into the body, we also align with the divine. So let us just become aware of the incredible gift of the human body, this miraculous collection of what seven trillion cells or whatever, this community, the most sacred community is the human body. All of these cells working together to enable us to have this unique human experience. And they work in presence. So let's just connect directly with our body, dropping our awareness from the head down through the torso, down our legs, into our feet. We bring our awareness to rest right here, right now in our feet. We feel our feet connecting directly with Mother Earth, with Gaia. You might like to picture roots coming out of your feet and connecting directly into the Earth. Even though you may be on a concrete floor, elevated above the Earth, just use the power of your imagination to imagine roots coming out of the bottom of your feet and going deep into Mother Earth. And then down through these roots we pour our energy, our conscious awareness down the roots and we commune directly with Mother Earth. We feel our energy going into Mother Earth and communing with all the devas in the earth. And as we do that, so we feel a return of energy from Mother Gaia and nurturing, holding energy coming back through these roots that we put into the earth, nourishing, bringing life-giving energy up through the roots to our feet. Just feel this energy from Mother Gaia coming through this root system that you've put down into the soles of your feet. You may feel it as a warmth. You may feel it as a color, a vibration. You may even feel it as, as an emotion. There is so much love in Mother Earth. She's ex an expression of divine love. Let's drink from this mother's milk and bring it up the roots to our feet and then gradually draw this energy up through our ankles, through our calf muscles and shins, into the knees up through the thighs, into the pelvic region. This pelvic region is our, <clears throat> our root energy. You normally picture it as a red energy. It's the energy that symbolizes our tribe, symbolizes the things of the earth, symbolizes our needs in the physical world, money, careers, etc. Let's just feel this mother energy coming into this region and bringing stillness, 
quietness. Calming the red. Transforming the red energy of the base chakra into a beautiful, beautiful, glistening, gleaming radiance of mother pearl light. And let's bring this energy up slightly higher to the belly button, just beneath the belly button, to the dantian, to the seat of the soul. And let's see if we can bring our full attention into that quiet space that rests just below the belly button. It's a seat of consciousness. In the East they talk about it being the second brain. But it's actually a place of no thought, of absolute stillness. And as we connect to this place of absolute stillness, the stillness speaks to us, whispering words which have no form, no language, but they convey information. They convey truth. And in this quiet space of whispered truth, there is magic. There is the means to transform without any doing, without any manipulation or control. In this quiet space, there is grace. And grace is the energy of divine transformation, divine help. with no doing. This is the world of the miraculous. And we enter that world through stillness, through silence. No demands, no expectations, just surrendered acceptance. Coated with an air of gratitude. And now we take this beautiful pool of Mother of Pearl light, the quietness, the peacefulness. And we bring it up our body and we feed each organ in the body with this mother's milk. We bring healing where healing is required within the body. And we bring it up now into our hearts. And from the heart we radiate it out to the rest of the body, to every single one of those seven, 70 trillion cells in the body, so that each cell may be revitalized with this beautiful mother of pearl energy of quiet emptiness. And from this heart we radiate out to commune with everyone on the satsang tonight in a bubble of beautiful, beautiful, glistening light with this intention we change the very frequency and vibration of human awareness bringing in the vibration of healing, of connection, of peace and above all, 
of appreciation of the beauty of life exactly as it is in this moment, beyond the mind's judgments, preferences, expectations, disappointments. We find in this moment, here and now, there is unbelievable beauty. Now we take another deep breath in, right down to our toes. And a beautiful long breath out. And as we breathe out, we drop all the barriers to love. We take a second very deep breath in, filling our whole body up with this precious breath of life. And then we release and we let go and we surrender to life in this moment, here and now. And with an air of gratitude for just this moment, here and now, we gently, very softly open our eyes and we look around us at the world of things and we appreciate them even more. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for joining yeah, us. That was lovely. Oh, thank Thanks, you. John. Thank you. Beautiful. Very peaceful. I could have just stayed there. Well, you can. You can live there if you want. Yes. It's actually, I it's a place see. called home, actually. It's a place called home. A place called home. Mm. And yeah, we can visit it like we did now and for a brief moment. Mm. We can live but there. we can start to make it can our place of permanent yes. residence. There's the underlying... Thank you. Hello, Christine. Where Hello, Sher. Hi, Sher. Hi. We can't Hi. see the rest of you for some reason on yeah. the screen, but that's yeah. fine. Thank okay. you for the hearts. Thank we you. love getting the hearts. And if you enjoy what we have to share, please press the share button as well. Mm. Get the information out. So Indeed. what's happening in the heavens? That's so interesting. Well, it's, it's a biggie, isn't it? Well, it's big news in terms yeah, of astrology. Big news. So what, I have mentioned moon it. Is the moon going to bump into the sun or what's going to happen? <laughs> so... It's a very big event astrologically, astronomically actually as well, because uh, two giant planets, um, being Jupiter, which is the biggest planet in our solar system, and Neptune are basically aligning at the same degree now, and will be forming an exact alignment on the 12th of April. But you know, it's... It's in play now. I mean, it's not, not nothing's going to really change between now and then, but it just gets more, they align more and more. And so it's a big deal simply because uh, Jupiter's got a cycle of 12 years, but Neptune's got a cycle of 165, 166 years. So every, every 12 years they come together, but not in the sign of Pisces. And Pisces is um, ruled co-ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. So when Jupiter's in Pisces and Neptune's in Pisces, they're very happy in Pisces. So it's a very good expression of them. And so when these two come together, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime thing because they never it's never going to happen again in our lifetimes. So wherever it is in your chart, that, that may be um, some new opportunity, an opening, and um, um, where you're going to be using your faith, um, your connection, your intuition. But it's a beautifully creative, that's why we said sort of there's magic in the air. It's a bit mystical. It's a bit magical because it's the unknown. Pisces is the unknown. It's the river of life. It's the, it's the, it's the ocean. It's the ocean of oneness, Pisces, as a sign. So when you break it down and you look at what Jupiter is, Jupiter is the planet of expansion of faith, of optimism. It's, it's what we call a beneficial planet. So whatever Jupiter touches in a chart or wherever it's transiting, it's, it expands, it amplifies whatever it's touching. Yeah, you get that? Right? I do. Okay. Even so I Jupiter can that. is expansion, enlargement, amplification. It's also aligned with truth. It's aligned with faith. It's aligned with opportunity. Um, big higher knowledge, higher learning, higher growth, all those good things. When it touches Neptune, Neptune is the planet which in astrology refers to the infinite, the divine, the unlimited, unlimited potential. So it, it applies to dreams, it applies to um, 
intuition, guidance, um, the great organizing design, if you want to call it that. So when these two align, there's an amplification of that. There's an, there's an expansion of that. So that can mean mystical. It can mean um, very creative, very intuitive. Um, it can mean a sort of an open, opening, opening. And if you look at it even on a deeper level, Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, which is the planet of love. So it's an opening, an expansion of love, if you want well, to look at it like that, that as well. So just a little bit of, of the other side of it is we've also got um, Saturn and, and Mars um, together which is known as the handbrake transit, <laughs> which is kind of like you feel like you're taking one step forward and three steps backwards. It feels, it feels quite obstacle. Um, it, it feels like there's quite a lot of obstacles, particularly in the world of form. Okay. So when you're trying to make something happen, when you're trying to control something right now, it might not be working. You might be finding. Um, and that those, those two planets are actually square the nodes of the moon, which have got to do with our, um, our relationships and our future and our past and our karmic stuff. So this is a time where we are letting go of the old. We're letting go of old relationships in many instances. We're letting go of belongings in instances some, sometimes. I know friends of ours are, are letting go of their home after many years. A lot of people are letting go, releasing that which isn't kind of in alignment with who they are now or where they are now in their lives. And there's a certain amount of grief and sadness that sometimes goes with that. And that's the other side of Jupiter, Neptune, uh, because Neptune can mean grief. It can be letting go. It can be releasing. It can be the sadness that comes with releasing. At the same time, the openness that comes with that. So this weekend, um, we uh, my my cousin was has been looking after my cat, and he was very sick, and we had to put him down. And so there's been a lot of sadness, but also a lot of opening. It's weird. It's 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 both. It's like as you. As you soften into that sadness, there's also an opening. It's quite beautiful. It is. But there's also a sadness for that form that was that little being that's now departed. And so what came to me yesterday when I was sort of in the process of saying goodbye was the fleetingness of form. That's what came to me, is that we get so attached to form, whether it's a person, whether it's a place or a belonging or a pet um, or career or home or whatever it is we get so attached to it and this is a time I believe that we are the more we can realize how fleeting form is the more we can actually connect with what's real and what's lasting and what's infinite so that that for me that's what that's what Nep Jupiter and Neptune is about and it, it's it's us returning to our original state which is a state of love and oneness but in the process of that we often have to face duality and form leaving um, because we physical as well so that's so on a global sort of um a global scale of form and events what sort of events would align with this do you think from a global sort of point of view with the well there can be mass confusion, mass confusion particularly if you're in the mind and you're in the um the world of form so if you're trying to make things happen they're not happening there can be a lot of frustration a lot of agitation a lot of uh, instability actually that's on the on the on the sort of the lower end of the scale on the upper end of the scale if you are able to align with this these higher energies I believe that anything's possible under this transit. Magic. I think miracles, magic. Magic. Uh, magical downloads, visions for those of people who have visions, um, guidance, quiet guidance. You know, everybody sees and hears in a different way. I think it's just to get ourselves out of the way so that we can actually allow ourselves to flow with what's going on and not be too stuck 
in our ideas of the way it should be and the way it needs to happen. And um, I think the more we do that with this, with this energy, the more frustrated we're going to feel. So the energy is going to be building to, um, to, to the 12th, which is Tuesday. And then that follows, that, that energy stays at the same degree for the whole week, leading right up to the full moon. Um, so it's quite, a, it's quite a strong, long thing. It's not just a minute, you know, <laughs> where this happens. And then it'll still be in line and in play for, for the month. Yeah. So it's big energy. So anything could happen, yeah. actually. Yeah. Expect it's miracles. Infinite. But expect why not expect magics. miracles? Why, Magic, why not? Yeah. And see the miracles in every day, yeah. in every moment, in every Very, breath. Yeah. That's the, the, I think that's what, and that's what takes us into that place of oneness. Yeah. So seeing the beauty, seeing the miracle in just being alive. Yeah. So we're in a process at the moment of massive transformation. And yeah, there's change in the physical world of objects, as some of you may have noticed of, of, over the last couple of years. There's been huge changes there um, in most of our lives. But at a deeper level, there's a change at the energy level. And this is really what this um, alignment is really about. It's a portal and opening for a massive realignment of energy. And that's where the magic comes in, because we are, in truth, infinite creators. We are powerful beyond measure. And this portal that's opening now for us is an opening in our own power to create miracles, to, to work with the magic of life and to transform and I, I would suggest it's not about uh, getting your needs met in the old way of uh, form and um, papering over your insecurities, etc. But this is a way of stepping into a whole new awareness of seeing yourselves, of seeing the world around you, of seeing the interconnectedness of all of life yeah. and seeing those threads. And those threads of interconnectedness we know of as love. That's what love is. Love is a sense of oneness in your awareness. And as we open ourselves to that awareness so love is able to flow more freely into this dimension creating magic in our lives magic in our communities and magic in the world around us but it does require something that you mentioned there it does require letting go it does mm -hmm. require surrender what are we surrendering we're surrendering the old world what is the old world the old world is a world of things of form. desires of form even thoughts Control. beliefs they have formed. And it's letting go of that. It's letting go of that and trusting the formless, trusting this infinite intelligence called life to weave itself, to weave the magic into our lives. So this is not a, a time of, of getting a wand like my granddaughter would like to do and waving it around and creating things in her life which she might imagine might make her happy. I think one of the things she wanted to create was flying. That's, that's a nice thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, a unicorn. It's not so. Yeah, it's not so much of creating changes in the physical world around you. This magic, yeah. this magic is seeing a brand new reality, a, a brand new way of seeing in the world, a, a yeah. brand new way of perceiving who and what you are at the deepest level, of taking off the old blinkers that have blocked you from seeing your own magnificence, from seeing your own beauty. Yes. that's this opportunity that's the magic you know I, I know that a lot of people spend a lot of time uh, trying to beautify the body trying to exercise or put on makeup or, or whatever or my toupee that blew off tonight or whatever <laughs> so we all trying to beautify ourselves and we try to beautify our homes and we try to beautify the world to a certain extent but what if we didn't have to do anything all we had to do was remove the blinkers that we have on, remove the log from our eye so that we can see the beauty that's already there. So we can look into our face and so we can see, yes, there are wrinkles. There are signs of beauty, as we've discussed before. You know, when you go for a walk in the forest and you see an old tree, it is gnarled and wrinkled and it is so beautiful. So you As don't you start turn to see the tree and say you're an ugly tree because no, it's got bark no, on it. No, no, but the mind does that. It yeah. judges humans, humans very badly. So maybe this week what we can do is remove those filters from our perception and start to see the real beauty underlying all form. It's there. Underneath all form is the divine. 
to see through the form and to see the divine, that's magic. And as we change our perceptual lens, and as we start to see deeper, deeper than the judgmental mind normally allows us to see, magic happens in our awareness. We, our whole experience of life changes. And as our experience and our perception of life changes, so reality shifts because reality is not fixed. It's all made up of energy, just pure energy. And as we change our energy through seeing beauty in the world around us and joy, so the world itself, the physical world, transforms. Yeah, that's so beautifully said. And I think that also the other word that we can use for this time and this energy is miracles, is where is the miracle? The miracle is right now. And we're always looking for a miracle. Like even time. what you mm. asked me just now, what's likely to happen? Yeah. We all want a great big thing to happen. Well, we want the sky to were, open asking, and a light to come down. And a, I don't know, but I mean, that's what we, we think of as a miracle is that, you know, there's this, there's this incredible event that we see and we can smell and feel and touch. And maybe it will happen. Who knows? It can. But the miracle isn't that. The miracle is what you've just described of seeing the beauty and the miracle in this moment in you know the fact that you're sitting here breathing in and out in a body filled with those what 70 trillion cells or whatever and little mitochondria and little tiny little um, cells and things working in your body to make sure that you can actually even show up and turn the cell phone on you know and the blood flowing through your body and this hair growing and the ability to judge his food and see and hear and touch and taste. You know, that's a miracle. And we're always looking for miracles outside of us to make us feel supported and connected and to give us faith that there's something out there. Well, there is. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's the great organizing design and it's in here and out there. It can't not be. can't be out there and not here. So it's, it's part of us. So it's a miracle. It's think, looking for the miracle, acknowledging the miracle. You know, one of the miracles in life, which is so awe-inspiring, is when, um, when you hold a newborn baby or when you look into the eyes of a newborn baby. It's happened to me a few times in my life. And when you look at the, those beautiful hands and the fingers and the fingernails and the precious toes and the perfection and the ears and the... The, the eyelids, and it's just so nice. incredible. In that moment, you realize that life is a miracle. I mean, life is a miracle. There's no ways that humans could create that perfection of that baby when, it, when it's first born. And um, the mind goes completely blank. And in the blankness of the mind, it's actually an awe of what it's perceiving in the moment. There's direct perception. You've never seen this baby before. There's no judgmental mind coming in and giving you history and giving you projections. It's just, wow, it's just this moment. And we see the miracle in creation of life in that moment. And what stops us seeing that with everyone that we meet every single day? Yes, you might have been married 15 years, 25 years mm -hmm. to the same bit, but why can't you greet them in the morning with the same awe, with the same open receptivity, with the same non-judgmentalness that we perceive that baby? It is beautiful. It is a miracle that this form is manifesting in your awareness in this moment. And the most important person in your life is the one that you're with now, the one you're talking to, the one you're looking yeah. at right now. The, the, the most important uh, event in the whole uh, of creation is the one that's unfolding before us in this moment. Yeah. And when you start to see life with that, those eyes of incredible appreciation of just this moment and the awe and of the miracle, you know, all the events that had to take place just to make this event possible in this moment, this conversation take place, your mind goes quiet. And when your mind goes, goes quiet, that's when you open to the world of the miraculous. That's when magic starts to happen because magic comes out of presence, out of stillness, not from the mind, but it comes from that magic that's in the heart. And the heart resonates directly with this power of life, with this power of love, with this power of presence. And that's, I believe, an opening in the, this next week for us to directly connect with that magic, to see a drop of dew on a leaf 
on a, on a plant in the yeah. morning to see the little bird hopping around on the lawn or on a branch of a tree. That's, it's, the, it's in the seeing that we create the magic. Yeah, and slowing down enough so that we can actually see those things. Slowing down enough so that we can hear those things. We can taste those things. So instead of just pouring a cup of tea and just gulping it down, savoring each taste, each mouthful, you know, going outside, watch, as John said, looking at something beautiful just for a few moments, that takes you into that presence and magnifies the magic and the miracle. And looking at yourself in the mirror with those same eyes that you look into, into in, in a baby and that same sense of wonder. Imagine if we could look at ourselves with that same sense of wonder yeah. and say, oh, you're amazing. Not on an ego level, not on a physical fleeting form level, on a deeper level. Imagine if you could look into your eyes, really look into your eyes, look into your soul and see the, see the, 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 the real you through that shining through those eyes or through the eyes of a loved one. That's true connection. That's what this is opening up for us if we prepare to be with it. Honesty, openness, uh, taking away those barriers, allowing those barriers to fall down, the, allowing the armor that we've placed around ourselves to actually fall off us because it's not serving us. Allow some, allowing some of that control to relax so that we actually step back into that flow. If the flow is always there, that river of life is always there, but we the ones that move off it, we, we tune out of it, like a radio tunes out of the station. We tune out of it. Can't really, but we, we kind of tune it out, out, go a bit out of tune, and then we come back again, and then we go out, and then we come back. And so it's just to make that the, you know, to make the, call it the sacred, call it this, this moment, the beauty in this moment, see the magic in it, see the miracle in it, instead of looking for the miracle, that, you know, if only I could have a miracle <laughs> in my life, and somebody could wave a magic wand, and everything would be exactly the way my ego wants it, it doesn't work like that, and it sometimes does, but generally not when you're expecting it, right? Well, the mind, the mind is the one that is always in a state of wanting. It's always in a state of judging. And the mind in itself is an object. It's a thingness in time and space. And as such, it'll come and it goes. It's always changing. But underneath the mind, underneath all form, underneath all objects, is the timeless, the eternal. That part that never changes. That part that has never changed. And it's not even... You can't even call it a part. It's the fundamental underlying essence, which I like to use the word isness to describe it. It's the isness underlying all form. And the miracle is when we start to see the world from that place. We start, to, for example, when we look at that newborn baby, we look at that baby from that space. We're looking at it from that non-judgmental space, which we can call awe. Where there's no mind, there's just, wow, direct perception in this moment. So the old world, the world that we've been programmed uh, to believe as the real world, it's called the so-called real world, uh, it's just a misperception, it's not the real world at all, it's a world of illusion, is the world of what's called object consciousness. And we've been programmed from young to believe that that world is the real world. It's the world of time. It's a world of learning from history and and looking for future for fulfillment and valuing um, objects more than the space that's the old world now that old world is crumbling that old perception is crumbling and what's being born now is a new world of perception where we start to honor the sacred the sacredness where we start to honor the space where we start to honor stillness and quietness and presence and from that level of awareness a new world in the physical is born. But it's very different to the old world um, because the old world was built on an energy which we call fear. And that is false evidence appearing real. 
The new world is being birthed from an energy of love. There's a big difference between fear and love. Fear is the attachment of objects and it's a sense of self as an object. And then the fear comes in because we are fearful of the object dissolving or the object being attacked or the object being harmed or the object being taken away from us. So that's the old world. That's the way, that's the way the world has been um, projected onto us, I believe, through powers of manipulation control. Because when someone believes that they are an object, you can control and manipulate them. The new world, on the other hand, is, is not based on objects. You don't see yourself as an object. You see yourself as a field of infinite consciousness. And when you start to see yourself as this nothingness, as this no-thingness, mm. fear and anxiety cannot exist in that state because there is nothing to fear. They can, they, nothing can harm the nothingness. The nothingness is just the isness. You are the isness. You are infinite, unconditioned consciousness. And nothing, nothing can diminish that or, or, or take it away. And when you know yourself to be that, you start to look with the eyes of love, of appreciation, of joy. And that's when magic starts to unfold, uh, unfold in, your, in the world of form around you. Because you are coming at it from a very different level of perception. The world, they say, is like a giant, um, the one guy says it's a giant Xerox machine, photocopying machine. And when you live in a perpetual state of anxiety and fear, guess what you are creating in the world of form? More anxiety and more fear. When you start to know yourself as this infinite being is the world, is a word. Infinite being. Not a being, but infinite being. So then your heart opens and this, this perception of love starts to flow fully through you. And as it does, you start duplicating in the world of form from this place of being, from this place of joy, from this place of beauty. And you will find your life becomes magical. That's the essence of creating magic in your life. And I think it's beautiful. And I think that this is a time where we are, we need to keep flowing. So just keep flowing. Keep flowing with what's happening. Be open to what's happening. If there's something moving through you, if there's an emotion moving through you, allow it to move through you. Don't be, so it's almost like we get, we're the ocean. We belong, we're the ocean, we're the ocean of awareness. And then, you know, water, vapor happens and then forms a cloud and then little droplets come down and splat onto the earth again. So we, we are the ocean. We come back to earth as a little drop, as a little individuated drop. And that goes into the river and we join our little drops with other drops and we go along the river and it goes little twists and little turns. But ultimately, you're going back to the ocean. We're going back home to the same ocean. It's the same ocean of awareness. It's where we all came from. And so there's never, there never is separation. It's an illusion. It's not, it's not real. Separation isn't real. It feels very real though because we feel like individuated, separate per people. But we're not. At the, at, at, the, at the base of it, we're not separate. We're all, all one. So when you have that awareness, and that's what we're moving into now, we're moving into the awareness that we are not separate. We are all connected. And we're all moving towards the same thing, which is, is love, which is oneness, which is unity, which is we are all one. So there's, that, that, that eliminates the fear because there's nothing to fear. And it's, it, this, the form is fleeting. The form will d dissolve. All forms are going to dissolve. All forms they have are dissolving. Yeah. They have to. Mm. So if, when you see that, 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 and that is this opening of this new consciousness, but we very, you know, most of us are, very, are still very much in the old way of seeing ourselves as separate from each other. And so it's a process of moving into this new consciousness of, of oneness, of yeah. unity. It's a process. Yeah. We've got to allow that process. And in that process is going to be letting go of the old, letting go of our old beliefs. You know, I used to think that kept me safe. Oh, well, it actually doesn't. And I used to think I got my stability and security from that. Oops, but I don't. Um, so where do I get it from? So they're very deep, penetrating questions that we are and processes that we're going through. So it's to not get stuck on that on that river it's to keep keep moving keep flowing even if you're not sure where you're going 
just do one little thing. And it's, it's almost like that then builds a momentum and leads to the next thing. It's sort of, it's almost like where you're looking at a river and a little leaf gets stuck on a twig and then the water comes and actually flows and, and liberates that leaf. It's to just keep, 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 keep flowing, keep open, keep flowing. Allow the feelings to flow through you. Don't get stuck on them. Don't go into the story about them. You don't need to. You can just feel the feeling and let it flow through you. Ah, this is sadness. Okay. Open to it. Don't open. close to it. Oh, this is pain. Can I even open to pain? That's a hard one. But can I even open to pain without judging it? Without saying this shouldn't be happening. No, it is happening. Can I be willing to face this? Can, can I be willing to accept this as well? That's what we're moving into. It's huge. This is huge. It's never going to happen again. And we've all signed up for this moment, for these moments that we're experiencing. Well, this moment. shift in awareness. We've yeah. signed up for this shift in awareness. Yeah. And, you know, Albert Einstein, just to mirror what you, just to echo what you were saying there, is he said that this is an illusion. You know, mm. towards the end of his life, he, he started to see mm. through the illusion of form physical solid form and he said but this is an illusion he said albeit a very persistent, very persistent illusion i mean it does seem to be real no, you mean isn't. you're not separate from me you're separate from we're me no, all you're not. one i mean that's the, that's the greatest truth we are all one you are your your brother's keeper you are your enemy you are the one that you love the most and you're also the one that you seemingly hate the most you, there is no separation those that you judge are yourself. And this is the greatest, you know, shift in, in, in awareness because that's really what it is. It's an opening in awareness. But here's the good news. The good news is that this is now being supported. This shift in awareness, which many people have been struggling with for, for some time now. This awareness is being amplified and supported hugely um, from the solar system, from the cosmos. The word cosmos means order. From the order, the higher order above the human condition, this flow, as Michelle said, this flow of transformation is now being given a huge boost as we move through the next uh, yeah. the next few days. So now is the time. And month. No, it's, it's the next month. month. And, and broadly speaking, for a lot longer than that because it's so big. Yeah. And it's not going to stop. This flow... Is already happening this opening is already happening this um, raising of human consciousness is already happening we're in the river you can't go back we're in it so how do we navigate it is the question do we navigate it kicking and screaming and trying to you know uh, hold on for dear life to the bank because that's not gonna work in fact, people die like that. I heard the banks are all going to collapse. <laughs> no, they are. Actually. Is that the bank <laughs> that you're talking bank. about? <laughs> yeah, that, that too. <laughs> but you know, you know, when you're in a river and you're trying to hang on to the bank or hang on to the little twig or little log, you're not going to hang on to it for very long. You might get drowned by doing that. You've got more chance of actually floating down by surrendering. Um, so it's to surrender yeah, to this process, even if it's overwhelming. And to know that there is a plan. There is, there is something holding us. Mm. Life has a plan. So to just keep telling yourself that, even if you don't believe mm. it, life has a plan. I am supported at all times, no matter how chaotic it seems. No matter how the world of form seems to be crumbling around me and I, I don't know where to go next and what to do next. And a lot of people are experiencing that. You breathe. And you bring yourself back. And you say, there's a plan. And I'm in life. I'm in the flow of life. Life is leading me. Life is guiding me. And I'm open to being guided. That's the energy for now. Yeah. In the same way that every single drop of water is finite as an individuated drop, the water itself isn't. The water is eternal. We are that ocean, pretending or forgetting that it is the ocean, pretending to be a drop for a short moment in time. Yeah, we are the ocean. But the one, if you can just use this maybe to help you through these times, and that is to let go and let God. That's such a powerful, powerful phrase. That, and we use the word God to mean, mean grand organizing design. Yeah. That's what it is. This infinite love, this infinite ocean is the divine. 
let go, surrender, surrender your will to the greater will. That'll make this journey a lot more pleasurable, in fact, enjoyable, even through the rapids that we're going through at the moment. Let go, let God surrender to life. Life has a plan for you. Each one of you is a necessary part in this sure. beautiful unfoldment of this new fabric of humanity. And you have a precise role to play in it. And your role will be um, amplified as you surrender, as you let go of your goals and your needs and your fears. So life, the river of life will carry you even faster towards your destination. And it is beautiful and it is perfect and it is miraculous. And now is the time to align with that feeling within you, the feeling of the miraculous, the, fe the joy and the beauty of life. That's what I think will carry us closer to our true essence than anything else. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, you're going to lead us with a mm. nice visualization. If you have any questions or comments, please type yeah. them up. We, we love getting those and we also love getting the hearts. And if you find what we have to share with you of any value, please press the like and the share button. It does help get this out to a broader audience. Yes. And there's never been a more important time to, to do the inner work. This is it. This week is important. This us. week, this month, this year. This present moment. This, this right Just now. This present but I mean, moment. This these times yeah. that we're in. Yeah. So, yeah. Never been more important. Thank you for the hearts. Thanks, everyone. Thank okay, so let's just settle in. Close your eyes. Make yourself comfy. And take a really beautiful deep breath in. All the way from the belly. Bring that breath all the way up to the top of your chest. And then release it very slowly out. Let's do that again. Focusing on the in-breath. And focusing on more strongly the out-breath. On the release breath. Releasing, 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 releasing. Until you don't have any breath left inside you. And now another breath, third breath in. And then a long releasing breath out. Allow all the air in your lungs to just leave. So that you empty. And just gently notice the breath. No pressing, no forcing, no controlling. Just noticing the breath as it flows in and out. Noticing the temperature of the air as it goes into your nostrils. And with each out breath, relax your body a little bit more. Relax the, the forehead, those little lines in the forehead, the frown marks. Just relax them, just in this moment. The band that might, might be tighten around your head. See if you can loosen that band with your awareness. Unclench your jaw. Allow your, your mouth and your jaw to just be soft and restful. Soften those little muscles around the eyes. Slow the eyeballs down. Allow that wave of softness to go down through your, your neck and into your shoulders. Allow your shoulders to drop away from your ears. Put your shoulders back just a bit so that you really open your heart. Just allow energy to flow through you. You're opening up the channels, opening up the flow. This energy coming from above your head all the way down through your body. Softening 
relaxing, releasing. All the way down through your feet and into the earth. back up, bring your attention back up to between your eyebrows, a little point. And in this moment, imagine that you are standing on the shore of a beautiful beach sea. The sun is rising. The water is a beautiful pink pastel apricot colour, very gentle waves, it's warm, it's inviting, just imagine yourself walking slowly into the water, very calm, very peaceful, very safe. Maybe about waist height. Imagine lying back in the water. Your arms spread out, your legs spread out on your back. Looking up at this beautiful sunrise. Looking at the clouds and the sky. The infinite space above you. And this beautiful water, this ocean, that is holding you gently. And all you have to do is just surrender. You can keep yourself afloat, but you can rest in the knowingness that you are supported. And as the waves, very small little waves, come in and go out, you can feel the movement of the water beneath you. You allow yourself to drift a little bit in and a little bit out. The gentleness of this beautiful ocean. Surrounded by this ocean of love. You might say the words to yourself. I am surrounded by love. I am filled with love. Feel that inside you, feel that inside your body. Feel that inside your being. I'm full of love. And allow yourself to sink into it even more. Say the words, I am love. I am love. Completely released. Not holding on to anything. Surrendered to the flow. Surrendered to the ocean of life. Surrendered to where life wants to take you. On this journey. Open. Letting go of any resistance. I am one with life. Feel that stillness and that quietness. That softness. Feel it permeating your entire being. Feeling the peace. And when you're ready, you 
can start to make your way back to the shore. Allow the gentle waves to direct you back to the shore. Standing on the shoreline. Open your arms. And give thanks to this ocean of life. To the mysteries, to the miracles, to the magic. Now take a deep breath in. And out. And another deep breath in. And out. And you can bring yourself back to the room that you might be sitting in. Joyce, still in the ocean. Hmm, as we come back. <laughs> that was really beautiful. Wasn't that lovely, eh? Hey? Absolutely beautiful. Thank you for being with us tonight. Let's just to share an affirmation for the week ahead. Let's just, we've got a whole lot of cards here. So let's just see what card the universe is going to give us. Thank you for all the hearts. Okay. This one says, I am light. Very simple. I am light. Know yourself to be light. Beautiful. Light is the, is, the, yeah. is the eternal. It's, the, it's not form. It's not a thing that's there. Yeah. I am light. That was a beautiful card yeah. you selected. Well, the universe selected. Yeah. I'll photograph this and I'll put it up on the, on the Facebook page. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for sharing your energy with us tonight. Uh, these little candles of light are the um, make up the greater light of transformation of human consciousness. We're all part so of it, eh? You're all part of it. So thank yeah. you for adding your light thank you. with us tonight. And we look forward to catching up with you next Sunday, even being yeah. Easter. We will still be here uh, for Sunday Satsang with John and Michelle. And thank you for all the hearts. If you enjoyed this evening, pretty, please, 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 pretty, please, <laughs> press the like and the share button. Thanks, Love you all. Thank you. Have a beautiful week of magic yes. ahead of you. Yes, yes, yes. Believe in miracles. Mm -hmm.